Chris Tilton is the president and co-founder of the DeWitt Tilton Group, a Savannah area commercial construction company. He and his partner, Andrew DeWitt, founded the company in February 2014 after seeing the need for a Savannah firm that focused solely on new construction and one that can carefully manage every aspect of a project from pre-construction through completion. Andrew and Chris each bring 25 years of experience to the table, much of it in the Savannah market, along with strong portfolios of successful building projects. The firm brings financial strength, industry relationships, and outstanding reputation to work on every project. Chris says construction is in his blood. His father was a South Carolina low country home builder, and he was often at the side of his father's trim carpenter, learning the business on a hands-on helper. After graduating with honors from the Georgia Institute of Technology with a Bachelor of Science in the field of building construction, Chris honed his skills while working with several large construction firms in Savannah and Atlanta markets. He later founded the Tilton Commercial Group and the JHP Construction prior to co-founding the DeWitt Tilton Group. He is a licensed general contractor in both Georgia and South Carolina and is a Georgia registered real estate appraiser. Although born in Savannah, Chris spent his early childhood years on Hilton Hills, where his father was one of only three home builders at the time. He moved back to Savannah when he was eight years old and attended St. James Catholic School before graduating from BC, where he and, uh, he and Andrew became friends. He married Christy, an engagement manager at Microsoft, and has four children, Peter, John Clark, Jessica, and Christian. He enjoys fishing, attending his children's sporting events, and is a big history buff. The topic today is commercial construction, um, metal buildings, or mar modern marble. So Chris is going to tell us all about that. So thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. That was half of my talk she just gave away. <laughs> um, today's topic is metal buildings, modern marvels, businesses turning to budget-friendly options for state-of-the-art appearances. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I know Cynthia has told you a little bit about myself, a little bit about our company. And then we're going to talk about some projects that we have going on or have completed here in Savannah. And we're going to complete it by a montage of, of photos of uh, metal buildings that you would be amazed at some of them that they're metal buildings. <laughs> Again, Again, my name is Chris Tilton. I'm president of the DeWitt Tilton Group, and Kim Thomas is our director of operations. She's going to be running the slideshow over there. <laughs> um, I was I attended St. James Parochial School here in Savannah. I graduated from Benedictine in 1985, and I went on to Georgia Tech, where I graduated in 1990 with a degree of building construction. <laughs> I went to South Carolina that same year and uh, got my unlimited general uh, contractor's exam uh, license in, in South Carolina, and I moved to Fripp. Island, South Carolina, which is a small island just, just north of Hilton Head, and we did a lot of building, a lot of commercial building, a lot of home building, and we, we did a little bit of metal buildings. We were so um, out of tune with what metal buildings could do, we built a, a boat barn over at Fripp Island, and we actually drove pylons and kind of did a, a combination of a wood and metal building, because we simply didn't know enough about metal buildings to do it on our own. And in, uh, in 2005, I moved to Ridgeland and went to work with my dad, and we started uh, Tilton Commercial Group. And we did custom homes, but we also did a number of metal buildings. <clears throat> and again, those metal buildings were hangars, uh, warehouses, and we only did metal buildings because it was a cheap way to get uh, the utility that our clients were looking for. We really didn't have any grand vision of, of all the, the, the attributes that the metal buildings could bring to you. In 2015, I came over to Savannah, my partner Andrew DeWitt and I, who had attended Benedictine together, started uh, the uh, DeWitt Tilton Group. And our second job, uh, a banker had, had introduced us to an individual by the name of Don Peake, and he wanted to build a 40,000 square foot uh, office warehouse building for his corporate headquarters for Pressaball, and they make ball bearings throughout the world. They're, they're actually uh, headquartered in Belgium. So we, uh, he came to us, we sat down, Kim drew him up a plan and he wanted us to build the building.
building and at that time we really didn't have anybody to take our metal, metal building work to. So we ended up calling a number of people and Marty Hooks from the Star Building System, he gave us great service. We had a lot of different changes and questions and he took the time to price every one of our changes and answer all of our questions. So since the inception of our first metal building we've been tied in with Star Building Systems. So our first project that we built was Pressaball and again it's a 40,000 square foot metal building located in Pooler and it's a pretty typical metal building um, from the outside. We did do uh, a few things on the exterior. We did some front porches, um, its deck height. Um, inside is where we really made a difference and here we'll see some pictures of warehouses. It's a, it's a, uh, we have center columns in this warehouse um, and it was okay because it, it worked out with his racking system and he had two other tenants that we had demising walls where the center columns were. Um, in this, we also, because it was 21 foot eave height, we did allowances for a second floor office. Um, the first floor was offices, um, which we'll get to here. This is looking out into the warehouse and getting into the office. Now this was their corporate headquarters um, and again they're, they're centered in Belgium and he really wanted to do it up nice. So we came in and we did polished concrete floors, we did sheetrock ceilings, the sheet, sheetrock walls, we did two panel doors, uh, uh, solid core doors, laminate flooring in the break room, all sprinklered, um, a second floor with a spiral staircase for, a, um, he I ended up putting a little exercise room up there. Um, recess can lights and again from the outside when you ride by and you see this metal building you would never realize that inside that building was by no means class A office but a very very nice office. Um, he was extremely happy um, with with the project and he's a, a good friend of ours today. Our next building um, of significance we did a multi-tenant building in Richmond Hill um, and it's anchored by Jeff's Beverage. And what was so unique about this building, well actually I think we have a little video we're going to let run for just a second. You kind of see the building, there was a gas station there that we tore down and you can kind of see from start to finish uh, the whole process. And I'll just mention why it's going on. The, the beauty of this building is we, we had three sides that were wood framed. So we had what was what's considered open frame construction from the metal building. So it gave us a lot of flexibility to finish those three sides. And again, if you see this building, you would never know it's a metal building unless you rode around back and saw the metal panels. <clears throat> And here you see the metal building going up. And again, on three sides of this building, we only put the structural members in. You can see the rear wall actually has the metal panels. Um, and then we wood framed inside the building. And one of the beauties of a metal building, this clear span, is you have a lot of flexibility with the floor space inside. And being a retail a building, uh, Jeff needed that flexibility. We ended up adding some offices upstairs. Um, but you can see when we get to some other pictures, just the openness that he has for the retail building. And again, you would be hard pressed to see if that's a metal building from the outside. He did brick on the uh, foundation with hardy plank exterior. And that's the finished product inside. Again, he did with stained concrete. It was 22 feet uh, clear span, uh, open inside, so we did exposed ductwork inside. All 
All right. And again, you can see the rear with the metal panels. And again, because it's facing away from 17, that was allowed in Richmond Hill, and it was a cost savings where we didn't do all four sides with the hardy plank siding. So by framing up three sides of that building, we were able to do the veneers and also do all the, the storefront, the windows, um, everything that would make it attractive as a retail building. The next building we built was Living Goods right next to Spanky's and Pooler. And again, this was a building that we did pretty much the same thing except we did metal framing inside. But basically, it's a metal building with three sides open, which means we come in and frame those with, with metal studs. And again, because we were able to do that, there's the rear where you see the metal panels. There you see it where we framed up the, the walls so we could have the storefront, we could have the veneer, the stucco veneer, we could have the parapet framing which hides the single slope um, and then we could apply all the details the stucco bands um, the trim details and again inside it's clear span which gave the living goods the freedom you'll see when you walk in to the finished product um, you have that openness. So they were able to do all their displays. They built the, the uh, seven foot walls to display all the appliances and their bedding. But again, the buildings is it gives you that flexibility to do anything you want on the inside, which would be nearly impossible to do if it was wood framed. Um, so in the next building we, uh, of significance, we did an addition to Butler Marine. And what we did in this building, which we had never done before, it was an exterior um, application where they parked boats underneath. So we ended up galvanizing all of our structural members. So everything on that job, all of the structural members as well as the bolts, everything was galvanized because it sits right on the water. And that was our first foray into uh, that type of construction. And we've done it a lot of times since then. Um, this is a building we're just finishing up at the porch, and this is the first building that we applied uh, insulated metal panels. And the beauty of insulated metal panels, and you'll see a picture of one here in a second, is the insulation is in between the panels. So when you put the panels on the roof and put the panels on the walls, the, it's conditioned. It's ready to be conditioned. There's no more insulation required. Now this building, it's a small building, but it houses a couple million dollars worth of switch gear that operates the cranes out at the port. Again, it was all galvanized framing members, all insulated metal panels. This is a uh, project that we're just beginning um, off of White Bluff Road, the Trinity Praise and Worship. Um, and again, it's a metal building that's open framed on three sides. And the rear side will be metal panels, but three of the sides will frame in wood, will have uh, brick on the foundation, stucco on, on three sides. We'll be able to put any of the windows we want. It gives us the flexibility by wood framing those exterior walls to do anything as far as windows are concerned, any openings, as well as any veneer that we have. And that is just the wireframe. When we get a job, we put in what's called SBS, the star building system, and it cranks us out this, and it automatically gives us a price back to us for the components of the metal building. This is a uh, building we're fixing to build over at Hunter. Um, it's a test engine building. Now, this is the first building that we have built that's actually going to have liner panels inside. So basically, you've gone from galvanized uh, framing members to insulated metal panels, and now they have a product that goes inside with liner panels. And basically, it gives you a finished interior versus coming in and doing sheetrock. A lot of these buildings can't have combustible materials in them, and these liner panels give you a non combustible material from the inside. <clears throat> this is a job we're doing at Fort Stewart. Um, and again, this job has insulated metal panels. It's a very, very sophisticated building. And in the old days, when you, when you bought a metal building, you had to buy it with 20-foot bays. You had to buy it with increments of height. And these days, we can do metal buildings any shape, any form, any spacing that, that our clients desire. <clears throat> 
This is another building that we just started in Garden City. And this is a testament to uh, one of the great things of metal buildings. Um, in our industry, and hopefully there's no building officials or planners here, we tend to call Savannah Slovanna because we, it takes forever for us to get a permit. Now, a lot of that has to do with the amount of construction that's going on. Well, this particular client was dealing with someone else for, for nearly a year and a half and just wasn't getting anywhere. Well, we got involved in December, but it took us approximately eight months to get our permits. Now, the beauty of this is when we signed the contract, we ordered our metal building. So we have a 30,000 square foot metal building sitting on this site. We're actually pouring the walls. I think we have some pictures. We actually are pouring the walls for the slab. So the day after we pour that slab, we'll be ready to install that metal building. And that saves us a tremendous amount of time because the com those components are made off site. They're quality controlled and they're sitting there ready for us when we're ready to go to this building. <clears throat> This is another building that we kind of have the same situation as equipment share building. It's in Richmond Hill. And this building, um, again, we, we took several months to get permits. We signed a contract and we ordered the metal building. So again, when we have that slab poured, we'll be ready to install that metal building. And this saves us a tremendous amount of time on the building process. Now our, our last uh, photos here, this is kind of a montage. This just kind of shows you these are star buildings from around the United States that you can see. The first few are agricultural buildings. Then we have some auto dealerships, aviation buildings, churches, government buildings. Healthcare, large commercial buildings, maintenance buildings, manufacturing, multi story buildings. Schools, self storage, shopping centers, small commercial buildings, your standard metal buildings. and your conventional warehouse buildings. So, metal buildings, the, the four huge advantages of using metal buildings, as I said previously, time. Um, we save several months by ordering our metal buildings when we sign contracts, have those metal buildings. Now these days, in the old days, we could get shop drawings back in a few weeks and get the building um, delivered in, in four to six weeks. Now we're more like six weeks on shop drawings and six or six to eight weeks on delivery. But still, there's so much work to do getting the permit, um, getting the site work done, and to know that your building's being manufactured off-site and will be shipped when you need it saves a tremendous amount of time. The second is the budget. Um, it's a fact that metal buildings will be cheaper to build than a wood frame building. Um, and a lot of our clients who have designed buildings, they've designed them wood frame where we've been able to value engineer them and substitute that wood framing with a metal building and save them uh, a tremendous amount of money on their budget. Um, again, the flexibility of a metal building. You can do anything inside or outside of a metal building. If, if you want to build whatever you want to build, we can do it with a metal building. And because you have the clear span capability that is not available with wood, in the interior you can do anything. You can divide it, and if you want to change it, you can tear it down and redivide it. And that's just not possible to do with a wood frame building. 
And finally, a lot of people don't think about um, is metal buildings the eco-friendly and the sustainability of a metal building. Um, the economic life of a metal building is about 40 to 50 years, where a wood frame building is traditionally 20 to 25 years. The other thing is uh, there's a large part of the steel that is in these manufactured buildings that is recycled. And furthermore, when this building is done with this economic life, you can recycle this building again. Furthermore, being built off-site, there is zero waste. Now, I think our first job, we had some bolts left over. We weren't sure where it went, but <laughs> typically, you're not going to have any waste. And I'll tell you, we built a lot of wood buildings, and we could fill dumpster after dumpster after dumpster with waste. And as many times as I've tried to prevent that, that's just the industry. So again, the eco-friendly and sustainability of metal buildings is tremendously more effective than a wood building. So that's kind of the grand scheme. And I think if everyone realizes now what you can do, metal buildings have come a long way from your traditional metal building in the backyard and with the design capabilities um, with the spans with the modern technology basically in the manufacturing of the buildings the industry has moved very much forward and there are just so many different things that we can do with metal buildings now prompt um, we're doing a lot of retail spaces and I think retail the retail market in Savannah which just five years ago was predominantly wood has moved very much to the metal building and a lot of these retail buildings um, are they leave unfinished and typically what we do is we come in we put a metal building in we frame up the four sides or three sides we set the rooftop units um, for the bays and then they go get tenants and we and we finish the bays so again the metal building market has changed tremendously um, we love it we love the the, the the capabilities that we're able to do the different uh, things we'll be able to provide our clients and uh, we're excited about having a, a, a strong metal building presence here in Savannah. So at this time, any questions I would uh, take and love to answer them. <clears throat> yes, sir? What are your expectations for how these buildings would stand up in really nasty weather? Well, uh, you know, every, th every building that we design is engineered, and, and the majority of the buildings that are designed are designed to a sea exposure. Basically, everything in Savannah and Pooler is required to be designed in a sea exposure, and that's a 140 mile per hour wind. So those buildings are professionally engineered to withstand 140 mile per hour winds. Yes, sir. Are, are you doing any single family residential with the metal building? You know, um, we don't do any residential building, but we've had, that is a, a, a part of their market, yes. They do offer single family homes with metal buildings. At 140 mile an hour? Yeah, I mean, if it depends on the, it depends on the zone that you're in, but the majority of Savannah and Pooler is in a C zone, and it has to be designed for 140 mile per hour wind. Yes, sir. How do insurance companies view insuring? Yeah, well, I mean, most of the time you're, I mean, versus a, a metal build, a, a wood frame building, there's going to be a savings in your insurance. Um, again, there's a, a, the majority, the structure itself is non-combustible. Um, even if we do wood framing around it, like we did in Richmond Hill, if that wood catches fire, the building's not going anywhere because it's anchored to the foundation and it's a structural uh, uh, steel building. Yes, sir. So if, if your uh, engineered panel with the insulation and all takes water during the storm surge, there's not any dry out? I mean, it's... Well, I mean, it's it, the good thing about it, it's a rigid insulation, so it's not going to be as susceptible to getting wet as like bat insulation. But if, if there's a storm surge, that would obviously be an insurance claim and they may want to take a panel off open it up and see what the insulation did but again being rigid insulation it's like the old insulation board we used to put on houses typically it holds up in water why would anybody want to use wood Oh, that's a good question. You know, a lot of people just don't understand the things you can do with a metal building. But it's becoming more and more prevalent. The market, like I said, for the retail market here in Savannah, the majority of the things that we see, we do a lot of design build, and any client that comes to us, we're going to design it with a metal building. And there's a lot of the um, older school people that just are, have not bought into that, that metal building is the way to go. And if we get it from an architect or an engineer and it's wood frame, and we've done a few, we've done some of those. Um, it's that's the way we go with it. 
Now we will value engineer. We just completed the retail center on Chatham Exchange and Aguichi Road. It was wood frame with some structural steel. Um, by the time we got it, it was too late to value engineer it because it had already been permitted. What do you mean by value engineer? Right? Oh, yeah, value engineer, if you take a set of plans and look at them, we value engineer, we figure out how can we build this building and have the exact utility, the exact design, exact look, but save you money. So we go through that and say, well, first of all, let's use a metal building, because again, I think we all agree, if you look at most of these buildings that were completed as metal buildings, you would never know they were metal buildings. So we value engineer all of the projects we have and try to save our clients money without losing the utility or the design of the project. Yes, sir. Typically, uh, price per square foot for that valued uh Value engineering, what you know, it, it depends, and it, we've done value. And, it, and the uh, Jeff's Beverage Building, when it came to us, it had a south Florida design to it, and it wasn't a metal building. It was a wood frame building with lots of stucco, lots of cornice detail, and it simply was not in their budget. So we took that building, and I bet we we probably saved two hundred thousand. We probably saved twenty dollars a foot on the building by value engineering that building. Now in Richmond Hill, that building fits more in keeping with this in Richmond Hill than a South Florida design would have anyway. And I know I'm biased, but a lot of people say it's the best looking building in Richmond Hill. Um, but it, you know, by, by just, you know, it depends on our clients' budgets. The first thing we try to do is not change the design, but in some instances we actually have to change the design. Yes, sir. I hate to ask you a question. <laughs> uh, how about changing over a box store to self-storage? Um, uh, we, we've been asked that before. Um, we have, STAR has a self-storage uh, department where we actually can do that. Um, we have, I mean, we've had all kinds, we had a client in a couple weeks ago and he was looking at a building in Savannah and he wanted to take the roof off and raise it 20 feet. And again, we have that question asked a lot because there's a lot of old metal buildings in Savannah that aren't meeting the needs of the current users or the current uh, people looking to buy it. So what we would do is typically in that instance, we would get a structural engineer involved first to make sure the foundation can stand it, and then we get our star engineers involved and actually how to go back up on top or how to convert it to self-storage. Yes, sir? Where's star engineering located? The star building system is in Tennessee. Oklahoma, they do have they do have a facility in Tennessee. Yeah, their their headquarters is in Oklahoma City. <laughs> And they're a four billion dollar a year company. I mean, it's, they're not a small company. Yes, sir. When you have a pitch roof, do you offer uh, a metal shingle looking? Well, typically you have two options, and uh, the majority of these buildings are standing seam metal roofs, which is uh, nicer than a PBR, which is just your standard uh, metal panel. But a lot of these buildings require what's called a weather tightness warranty. Uh, living goods and all the buildings on the ports, all the buildings on the bases require a 20-year uh, weather tight warranty. And the great thing about that warranty is when we're putting that roof on, Star sends representatives down three times while we're putting that roof on and that warranty comes from star not from little old DeWitt Tilton group so that warranty's got some backing to it yes ma'am uh, you mentioned earlier that you know some of the old buildings in Savannah you do want to raise them up can you do that oh yeah absolutely yeah we've uh, we haven't done it, maybe cost prohibitive, I don't know, but we priced that out several times. Yeah. And in that instance, is it better just to scratch it and do a new one? Well, the biggest problem, we had a seminar last year about dirt. There's Finding industrial zoned land in Savannah, Georgia is very difficult. And what you're going to find now is because of the new floodplain uh, mitigation issues, you cannot take a, we had a client that found 16 acres on Dean Forest Road and wanted to build a, a large metal building complex. But after floodplain mitigation, he lost 11 acres. Um, because if you're in a floodplain, for every shovel load of dirt you bring in, you have to take a shovel load out. And so it's very difficult to find X, which is out of the flood zone, industrial land in Savannah. 
Um, so it's sometimes you don't have the option. And if you can find a building that meets your utility, but it needs minor, well, raising the roof 10 feet is not really say minor, but if you can improvise that building to fit your needs, then sometimes that's the only path you have. All right, thank you very much.